Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. And today I am going to do a review of three different sorts of water brushes. This first set is by Pentel and it's a set of three. And I've used those since the beginning of this year. Now this is where you fill up the water compartment. So you just fill it from the tap and then you screw it back together. And the lid comes off. This one I've used quite a lot and in fact as you'll see later on it isn't actually working properly now. So you squeeze the drum of the brush pen to release the water onto the fibres of the brush itself. But this one for some reason there's hardly any water coming out now. I've been using this since April and this was my first attempts at using these. You always need to have a piece of tissue handy to clean your brush on. So as you can see, the paint here is, is rather dry. It shouldn't be like this. It's because the brush itself isn't functioning properly. I'll have a look and see if I can repair it. And if not, I'll have to just put it aside and ditch it. Right, this is from the same set. There, there are three different sizes of brushes in this set. As you can see, the fibres are a white nylon brush. They're not the best of brushes, but for what you use them, they are very uh, adaptable. So you squeeze that body of the, or the barrel of the, like the pen, and the water will come down onto the brush. It's not, to be, particularly to begin with, it's not that easy to actually control the amount of water that comes out. But after a few practices, it gets better and easier. So sorry I'm out of shot. I do this quite a lot in this video. So squeeze the barrel to get water onto the paints and then you can squeeze the barrel again to flood your paper with water. You can use them to do wet washes so you can use them just to paint over first with water and then add a wash afterwards. I'm just going to make the paint a little bit thicker here or darker. You can wash them in water as well. Now I'm using a regular brush here just to show you how a the difference between the two and also how a thirsty brush works with a regular brush and with the um, the brush pens themselves. So this is just a regular brush, not a particularly expensive one, but also not a cheapest. I'm drying my brush and then lifting the water off the paper and also some of the, the paint as well. So if you want a very pale pigment, you can do this. If you've got too much water on your paper, you can do this. And it depends how staining the actual pigment is as to how much you can take off. Okay, so that was the Pentel brush pens. And now I'm going to show you the Derwent ones. These are them. They are a push button set and you get four in the set. They cost around about between 22, 23 to 25, 26 pounds. So they're not overly cheap. I don't know if you can buy just one, but these come in four different sizes, which makes it quite useful. You have a two millimeter fine tip, a three millimeter medium tip, a four millimeter large tip, and a 10 millimeter large chisel tip. And I did have a little struggle trying to get these out. So I speeded this bit up because it's not particularly interesting opening a package. So here we have the four brushes. 
So it says, assorted point and chisel tip water brushes for a range of strokes, large water barrel with push button for easy control water release, ideal for use with water soluble paints and pencils, portable and convenient for indoor and outdoor use, durable nylon fibre tip hold shape and point for continuous use and comes with protective cap, comfortable handling and leak proof. So this is where you put the water and then screw it up. This is the chisel tip one, the biggest. Now, one thing I found, if you try to put the top back on, the fibres kind of protrude at the sides and you can damage the brush. So I did struggle putting the cap back on. So I had to pinch the fibres to make sure that they were all inside the cap before I put it on. So these are the four of them. As you can see, the cap on the large one is different to the other three. And again, I filled them up with water now. So on this one, you don't press the barrel, you actually press a button, which is actually easier than squeezing the barrel. So this is my first time trying them out. I've squeezed the button to add more water. Now I'm going to dry it and I'm going to see if I can use this as a thirsty brush to actually soak up some of the excess water. It's, it's actually quite difficult and I have found this as a problem with these sorts of brushes. Now, I don't think it's a problem with the brush pen itself. I think it's just the fact that the brushes aren't very good. And it's a limitation. I use these for painting outdoors because it means you don't have to take an independent water supply with you. So it makes it much easier. And I also do it for my sketchbook, this sketchbook that I'm actually about to sketch in you'll see at the end i show you the past sketches that i've done using the pentel brush pen these ones have a nice big water reservoir much bigger than the pentel so as you see there the nylon tip is pure white but it won't stay that way, it will stain with paints. But don't worry, even though it's stained with paints, doesn't mean to say it's dirty, it is just stained. And so you can still get clear water out. So I'm trying a green here, pressing the button to release more water. I do think it is easier to control the flow with these than the ones where you just squeeze the barrel. So I quite like that. And here I am actually pulling it back some of the water. And I'm, I'm going to show you the difference between that and a regular brush. You see how much more I can take, remove the pigment from the paper than I can with the brush pen. But I guess if you had a nylon brush like these, a really cheap nylon brush, then you would have the same problem. So they are what they are. They're great for sketching but I wouldn't use them for a finished painting. Now I have managed to soak up some of the uh, water, the excess water. And now I'm just cleaning it off with a tissue. I don't know if you can see here, but I am just pressing the button and putting some water onto my finger just to show that the water is coming out. Sorry that I did that so far down the picture. Just painting again. I always, when I do these little samples, I tend to do the dark side on the left 
going to the light side on the right, just trying to show a full range of colour that is available with the pigment and with the brush. Rinsing it again on the towel. Now I'm going to try the big brush and again you can see I'm pressing the button, the water is coming down and then I'm just going to kind of massage it into the brush on my finger. This would be a really useful brush to use for a wash for a sky or the sea or anything that needed a large amount of water, uh, sorry, of colour without having any detail in it. You see you can also do fine lines if you use a chisel brush on its side. It takes a bit more washing this one but I'm just going to use it to try to suck up some of that water and that's working quite well. Sorry my hands in the way you can't see but you'll see in a moment. So you see I have managed to actually dry brush up some of the water, the excess water, and I'm washing it with a separate water tub there just because it's easier. Now it's easier to get the bristles back inside the cap when the brush is wet. So this was my Pentel brush that wasn't working very well. You see how coloured the nib is of that brush. So that one's probably destined for the bin. Later in the video, I will be showing you another brush, another brush by Derwent that I showed in an earlier video when I was uh, reviewing their paint pan sets. All right, so that tube of paint is what I'm actually going to draw. And since I've been doing these sketches, I've been trying to draw without drawing in pencil first. So when you draw in ink, it's there. You can't erase. So this is a no eraser type drawing. And for me, that's very good because I tend to be a bit perfectionist with my lines. So this is trying to teach me that I don't have to be a perfectionist. And, you know, as you'll see later on when you see my sketchbook, there are ones that didn't turn out very well. But they are what they are. And this is just all about enjoying the process, sketching, learning, because you never stop learning. However long you've been painting, you never stop learning. Every single time you draw something, you are learning. And I can't emphasize, emphasize that enough. I then outlined it with a darker, a, a thicker pen. Now I'm going to have a go at actually colouring it in. So I'm just deciding which of these brushes I will use. One thing I didn't like about these brushes is that you can't actually see what size they are from until you take off the cap. There's nothing written on the side and you can't really see through the cap. So apart from the very large chisel head one, which is easy to see because it's a different size cap, the others are really difficult to differentiate between. So that's one fault, I would say. You should have written on the side, Derwent, what size they are. Pentel ones, you can actually see through the cap and see what size they are. But equally, I don't think they have it written on them. So I'm just drawing this little tube of paint, just as something. This is my Draw Anything book. 
So it doesn't have to be something that is a wonderful still life project. This is just playing, basically. Stretching your, not so much your creative muscle, but your drawing muscles. This is not watercolour paper, this is just sketchbook. So it buckles and I paint on both sides. So I start off on the, when I'm doing the second page, the back page, it's already buckled from the previous page. So I have to live with that. But because it's just a sketchbook for fun, it doesn't matter. And my little, um, tester strip of paper that actually is watercolor paper now this is a posca white gel pen and i'm gonna just do the white writing on top of the black you have to make sure that the paint is dry before you use that and just doing the shadow of the tube I think maybe I've made the shadow a bit bluey, but as I say, it doesn't matter. Also, the tube doesn't tend to have, it doesn't go in enough at the shoulders. See, I'm my own worst enemy. I'm always criticising myself. I would like for you not to criticise yourselves, but you will. But oftentimes it's quite good if you do a drawing and then you put it away for several months and come back and look at it and you think, oh, it wasn't that bad. You might even like it. But I love these white gel pens. There are lots of different makes. The Posca ones tend to give you a more opaque white than natural just gel pens. And they do them in several different sizes. This is the fine one. I've also got a thicker one. But when you add white, you can only really add small amounts of white to a watercolour. The main white in a watercolour is the paper. So what you have to do is preserve the whites. So don't paint them. That's the best way to do it. <laughs> I'm just cleaning up my brush there. I think ready for a little bit more on the shadow. The darkest part of a shadow will always be where the article actually touches the ground. And it will kind of fade out from that. So if you look, the actual cap or the neck of the bottle of the tube is not touching the ground, but the cap is. So it's just where the pressure points are. And the white Posca pens or the gel pens, you can paint over the top and it will lighten it and also lighten the color that you've put it on top. Of. As a kid, when I used to do watercolours, I used to mix my colours with white to make them paler, which is not the thing to do because they tend to go very muddy and you don't get too, true pigments. So I always say to people, don't use the white in your palette. And often if you've got a pan set like this and it's got white in it, then that white will not be thick enough to actually use on top of colour. Whereas if you've got like, you wanted to put a sailboat in the distance in or something, you could use some white gouache and that would be strong enough. Right, that's this little sketch done. So now we will go on to another one. So this time I'm going to draw this jar of hot salsa. So jars and packets in your cupboard, they are quite good things to just drop down in your sketchbook. 
Remember, this isn't a finished painting. These are just little sketches of anything. And they really are just designed to improve your drawing ability. And also your looking ability, your seeing, because one of the most important things about drawing is seeing and learning to see, which sounds silly, but I found uh, it was a turning on point for me in my art when I learnt to see. In Betty Edwards' book, Drawing on the Right Side of the Brain, she quotes Gertrude Stein. And she says, Gertrude Stein asked the French artist Henri Matisse whether when eating a tomato, he looked at it in the way an artist would. Matisse replied, no, when I eat a tomato, I look at it the way anyone else would. But when I paint a tomato, then I see it differently. So that is the best quote I've seen about how to, how to see in art. And it's like one of those aha uh -huh moments. Um, and by the way, the book Drawing on the Right Side of the Brain is a really, really good book if you're starting out or if you're already doing lots and lots of drawing and painting. Now, I've started painting this. I'm drawing in parts of the label now. I've done parts of the jar. I have re preserved some of the white highlights in that jar in the glass to try and make it look like shiny glass. There are lots of different reds in this one jar, so it's quite nice to try out all the different reds. And I still use the layering technique, so I'll come back to the tomatoes again and again. I quite enjoy drawing little sketches like this because there's no pressure it doesn't matter whether they're right or wrong you're just just doing it you're just playing and and I think with art that is so important just to enjoy the process I keep saying that but I don't think I can say it enough <laughs> back to try and uh, differentiate where some of the pips in that tomato half are. And all the time refining the sketch. Now I'm doing the lettering for the salsa. <laughs> And as you carry on, it becomes more recognisable as the item that you are trying to depict. Or at least I hope it does. Just adding more layers, see, adding some darkness just to make that tomato look more three dimensional. And the pattern on the glass jar. And then trying to add some low lights on the glass to try and give that illusion of shininess. Back in with the Posca pen. Now here I'm doing in white the writing that is around the rim of the lid. Now I'm going to come back in in a minute because that was actually yellow and show you how you can go over the top of the white Posca pen and add colour to it. You have to be careful because they are water soluble so you can disrupt the white pigment. You can also lighten some of the whites that you've put in so that they're not quite so 
bright. Now, these were the paint pan set that I talked about earlier that had a Derwent brush in them. So they come with this Derwent brush, which is much smaller, and it also it has to fit inside the compartment. So it, it only fits in two halves. So you have to take off the stopper, and then this one's already filled with water. And these are a squeeze type brush again. So you squeeze the barrel. So I make sure it's clean first and get the water going. They're actually quite hard to squeeze. They're much harder than the Pentel ones. So here you can see I'm putting some water on my finger and just kind of massaging it into the bristles. Now this is the two Derwent brushes side by side and you'll see that the, the button, the push button one, is a much, much bigger water reservoir. But then that one wouldn't fit even in two halves into the little pan set. So for this sketch, I'm going to draw this apple. I've given it a polish, so make it nice and shiny. There always is a problem with me drawing here in that A, you can't see the same as I can because I'm looking at it from the side, you're looking at it from the top. And B, I have two light sources, so that always confuses the highlights. So just drawing really around circle. The most important bit to get on the apple to make it realistic is the stalk and the indentation for the stalk. The top is very yellow. And just adding more pressure to make more water come out so that it's not just one solid mass of colour. It's not definitely not as easy to use this brush. The water is more difficult to pump out when you press. Here I'm using the Posca pen onto wet paper just to make the, the little dots that you get on an apple and make them diffuse a little bit and then I can also put more water on to diffuse them more so that they haven't got sharp outlines. I'm doing the indentation there and the actual apple stalk itself. Just again adding more layers. It's not one solid colour. And here I am adding more of the little white spots with the Posca pen. I am finding this is definitely the most difficult of the three brushes to use. Now I'm going to draw this shell. Unfortunately, I've done it very much at the bottom of the pad and rather out of sight of the camera. So I do apologise for that. So I have speeded it up quite a lot. And for this sketch, I'm using the Pentel brush. So that one that you have to squeeze the barrel, not the push button one. And once again, you're not getting the same view of the shell as I am because you're looking at it from above whereas I'm looking at it side on. So that bright orange is where light kind of penetrates from B 
behind and shines through the shell and gives a kind of luminous orange colour. And my colours are slightly out here. I've noticed that they should have been more browny. They're a bit too bluey. But I quite enjoyed doing this because it was quite a complicated shape and I enjoyed drawing complicated shapes. They're quite challenging. You really are thinking not about the shape of the outline, but the spaces that are left in between. I will show you the finished drawing at the end. I do push it up so it comes into the frame. This is quite a complicated shell. Um, I'm no shell expert, so I have no idea what sort of shell it is. Conch? No idea. Not even sure where I got it. Probably found it on a beach somewhere. So we have the tube of paint, which I did with the Derwent push button pens and also the salt the jar of salsa the apple I painted with the Derwent brush that came with the Derwent paint pan set a little brush and then the shell I painted with the Pentel brush so which did I like the best definitely the Derwent push button next I would say the Pentel and after that the Derwent other brush. Right, so this is my sketchbook. This is inspired by a YouTube channel from a lady called Becky Cow, C-A-O. I'll put a link. Now on this page, those are my favourites, plus the two cans, and I quite like the Coke. I don't like the bottle on the left. On this page, I like the banana best, not the apple, not so keen on that. And on this page, my favourite are the orange and the plum, and also this little sketch of Millbrook. This page, I'm not really keen on anything. The next page, I like the bottle, the um, perfume, Chanel perfume, and the decanter. This page, my favorites are the Coleman's jar of mustard and my slippers, my old slippers that have sadly now gone to the bin. And this page, my son's 40th birthday cake and probably the aloe vera tube. This one I like best, the wool, the ball of wool. And this one, the Lindor, which I enjoyed eating as well, and the book about Spain. And I've just discovered that the little landscape isn't finished. So I hope you enjoyed the video today. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe, like and share. See you next time. Bye.